Science versus VTuber. Who wins? <laughs> Last week, Koyori from Hololive at a 24-hour stream event where in one of the sections he gave an academic quiz to five other Hololive members covering five subjects, two of which are right up this channel's alley. Both subjects have four questions each, and although Koyori did share the answer key on stream, I want to have a go at sharing this to English-speaking viewers and expanding on some of the answers. Hi, I'm Tham, and let's not waste any time. Solve the following formulas. This is relatively simple arithmetic. I don't think there's much to talk about. I'm sure they got it all right. Well, never mind. So Shion, Toa, and Nene got all the answers right. Pekora was wrong on number 7, and Mel was wrong on number 7 and 8. Apparently on number 7, Pekora answered 64, so she might have mistaken this plus sign for a multiply. Now the order of operations are as follows. You might have heard or used PEMDAS, BODMAS, PEDMAS, BITMAS, it doesn't matter, they all mean the same thing. It's important to keep in mind that multiplication and division are of equal importance. So PEMDAS doesn't imply you do the M before the D. Same goes for the A and S. These things may seem easy at first glance, but people still fight over it sometimes. For example, let's take a look at the last question. Regardless of which operation you do first, you'll arrive at the same answer. But what if I change this to a division? You'll get two answers. Conventionally, you just go left to right, but different calculators have different answers. And then you have equations like these that go viral because people can't decide whether this whole part of the equation falls into the P of PEMDAS or just this part, in which case they can do the 8 times 2 first. This would've been solved if you use parentheses or fractions, so really the only wrong person in this entire ordeal is whoever made the question. Remember, calculate is the easy part. You have calculators and software for that. The hard part is understanding what the question inherently means and not getting too cocky answering them. <laughs> Answer the meaning of the following words. Decimal number, prime number, divisor number, and natural number. A decimal number is a notation that involves a whole number part and a fractional part separated by a decimal point. It's basically another way to express fractions, so like 3.14, minus 9.99, 0.1, even 0.0. .0. A prime number is a number that can only be divided by itself and 1 without remainders. So 2, 3, 37, 7883, etc. They play an important role in IT encryption. Numbers that aren't prime, by the way, are otherwise called called composite numbers, like 4, 6, 15, and so on. A divisor is a number that divides another number, with or without a remainder. So in this equation, for instance, 10 is a dividend, 4 is a divisor, and 2.5 is a quotient. FYI, divisors that result in no remainders are called factors. In this case, 4 isn't a factor of 10, 1, 2, 5, and 10 are. A natural number is a positive integer, so 1, 2, 3, and so on. Integer being numbers that can be written without a fractional component, so numbers without decimal points essentially. Integers can be positive or negative, but natural numbers are all positive integers without the zero. For this question, no one got full marks, but Nene did get the most correct answers, aside from writing like a maniac. And Mel, well, she tried her best. Apparently, she mistakenly wrote the kanji for self instead of number, but even then, I still have no idea what she means by this. Xion bought a whole cake. That day, she ate two-fifths of it, put it in the fridge, and later that night, Nene ate one-third of it. How much is left? Pretty simple fractions. You find a common denominator, which is 15 in this case, so 1 becomes 15 over 15, two-fifths becomes 6 over 15, and one-third becomes 15 over 15. Then you operate the numerator and get 4 over 15, which is 0.26 in decimal, or approximately a quarter of the cake left. Toa and Nene got this one right, though. Well done. Xion tried to outsmart the question by assuming Nene ate one-third of the rest of the cake instead of the whole cake, which is technically still correct. で、ちょっと思いますね。残りのね、5分の3かな。3分の1食べた。って、もう思うわ。ちょっと思いますね。え、やってた。はい。これは先生。はい。やっぱ、すごい方法もあるんだよね、みんな。じゃあ、4問目
Mel can move at 5 meters a second and Pecora can move at 90 kilometers an hour, which is faster. This is a unit and measurement problem. You just pick a common unit to change them to. You can change both to meters a second or kilometers an hour, but Koyori picked kilometers per minute because it leads nicely to the next question. So, one kilometer is a thousand meters, thank god for the metric system, and one hour is 60 minutes or 300-600 seconds. From 5 meters a second, you just multiply by 60 to get a per minute, then divide by a thousand to get kilometers. From 90 kilometers an hour, you just divide by 60 to get a per minute. You'll find that Pecora moves 5 times faster than Mel. To give some context, Mel is moving at above average human running speed and Pecora is moving about as fast as a car in the highway. On to the second part. Mel realized she left something in the office 30 minutes after she left. If Pecora, who was in the office, delivers the item, how many minutes will it take for it to be delivered to Mel? Okay, Mel moves 0.3 kilometers in 1 minute, so in 30, she can cover 0.3 times 30, which is 9 kilometers. Pecora covers 1.5 kilometers in 1 minute. So to cover 9 kilometers, she needs 9 divided by 1.5, which is 6 minutes. That is assuming she'll return the item instead of stealing it for herself and claiming she didn't find anything. Xion got the second part wrong. Pretty close though. <laughs> <laughs> and Nene almost wrote the entire B movie script. It's a shame she blundered at the beginning where she multiplied instead of divided 90 kilometers an hour with 3,600 to get a per second, leading to Pecora moving at a comical 324,000 kilometers a second, which is actually faster than the speed of light. Oh, also her question was slightly different. It had Choco Sensei instead of Pecora, but she did answer the first part correctly, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> and that covers the math section. State the name of the following element symbols. Here you have helium, beryllium, oxygen, gold, and lead. Oxygen and helium, you probably know, they're the second and sixth most abundant gases in the atmosphere, respectively. Beryllium, in comparison, is pretty underground, no pun intended. It's the second lightest metal, typically used as alloys for springs, electrodes, and a bunch of other stuff. The last two I'm sure you're familiar with as well. One is used to make Rolex, the other is used to kill people. What's interesting here is often the symbol of an element isn't abbreviated from their English name, or Japanese in this case. <laughs> AU is aurum, which is Latin for gold. PB is plumbum, which is Latin for lead. The symbol corresponds to whatever name in whichever language or culture the element was originally given, and it tends to be different from their English names. Unsurprisingly, most of them are Latin. Some are Greek, some are named after places, some after people. You get the idea. Here are Pecora and Nene's answers. <laughs> <laughs> and they both mistook AU for aluminum. Reasonable mistake. Like if you see Y in the periodic table, it could be yttrium or ytterbium. You see PT, it could be platinum or plutonium. So it can definitely get confusing sometimes. And also aluminum is AL in the periodic table. AU is not aluminum and it's definitely not a phone brand, Xi'an. <laughs> Briefly state the difference between a typhoon and a hurricane. The difference is purely the location. These two things refer to the exact same phenomenon, something meteorologists prefer to call a tropical cyclone. A tropical cyclone is a rapidly rotating storm system that produces heavy rain, thunderstorms, and strong winds, sometimes to a disastrous degree. They almost always form in warm ocean before moving to land in and around the tropical regions of Earth, hence tropical. Although there are subtropical and extratropical cyclones as well, they're just very rare and have different characteristics. But I won't get into the physics 
basics of cyclones in this video. Just like the periodic elements, different cultures and languages have different names for this phenomenon. They're called hurricanes in the North Atlantic and Northeast Pacific, typhoons in the Northwest Pacific, and cyclones in the Indian Ocean. The National Hurricane Center in Florida also have different terms for them depending on their maximum sustained winds. In the end though, these names are mostly arbitrary geographic distinctions, not a scientific classification system, and definitely not a measure of a storm's ego. <laughs> 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 At least few of the girls got it right though. Koyuri did say as long as you mention location, she'll mark it as correct. <laughs> Answer the names of the following microorganisms. Microorganism or micro really just means a super small life form. So once you can't see with the naked eye, like bacteria, fungi, even dust mites. Toa answered mitochondria for all four. Not sure if she's aware of the meme or if it's just because it's the most popular cell organelle. <laughs> <laughs> A mitochondrion is not a microbe, it's an organelle. Microbes are made out of one or multiple cells, and each cell contains various organelles with different functions. For instance, the mitochondria in particular is, all together now, the powerhouse of the cell! Going from left to right, first you have a daphnia, which is kind of a water flea, about 0.2 to 6 millimeters small. They're freshwater crustaceans that eat algae, so they help keep water clear. They're also nearly transparent, so scientists often use them for models and various tests because it's easy to monitor their internal organs. Next is the spirogera, also known as water cell. They're green algae that are only 10 to 100 micrometers in width because they're one cell wide, but may grow to several centimeters in length. They're often used for medicine. The helical structures you see here are its chloroplasts, or Organelles that facilitate photosynthesis and are present in all green tissues of plants and algae. Then you have euglena, which is a single cell flagellate eukaryote that lives in fresh and brackish waters. Eukaryote meaning an organism whose cells have a nucleus and membrane bound organelles. Flagellate as in having a flagellum, which is this hair tail thing they use to move around. They're typically about 35 to 50 micrometers in length, and in Japan they're made into powder for consumption. Apparently they taste like dried sardine flakes. Last is the paramecium, which is a single cell silicon eukaryote that also lives in fresh and brackish water. Ciliate as in having a cilia, which are these hair-like organelles, as opposed to having a tail like the euglena. They're 50 to 330 micrometers in length and is often used for genetics research. Surprisingly, Xion actually got all four correct. That's really impressive. I've only ever heard of two of them up until I made this video. なんかこの植物系得意だったんだよ。え、生物と植物系得意だったんだよ。え、でも、よう覚えてますね。確かに。それは。確かに。ね、なんか新たな。生物博士って呼んでいいよ。よう覚えてますね。確かに。それは。確
ね。そうそうそう。国語ですから二人のあれはね。そうだった国語だ。FYI here are the scores for the math and science sections combined, and here's the final score with the other subjects included. Math respect for the sassy girl. Anyway, that's about it for the video. Subscribe for more weep science like this one. This was pretty fun to do. Leave a like if you like it. Dislike it if you don't. And see you next time.